Again, folks, we welcome you to the, uh, the International Food and Music Festival, where we celebrate fun. You know, take a look around you for a minute. Have a look at all the different nationalities, colours, people whose ancestry is from all over this planet, all over the world. And we, we hear right now there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people's stories and lives uh, that we celebrate, we, we appreciate the, 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 the differences in people's lives uh, and we celebrate with an international food and music festival with great food, great music tonight. You're going to hear some great stories uh, of people's lives uh, uh, from all over the world. And so people that have evidently made Australia home. So we want to hear that song tonight. We still call Australia home. Give them a round of applause this evening. You know, Australia, folks, is known as the lucky country. A place of huge diversity of people, of languages, of lives. But you know, this is where people come many times to, to, to they, they get to choose to, to buy a house, to work a job, to make some money, to get ahead. People come here because of liberties. There are many people sitting here right now, you've, you've ran to Australia because of liberties. You know, in Australia, you get to choose which religion you want. We, we, we were birthed as a Christian nation. We, we let people choose. That's part of liberty, isn't it? 
what religion they're allowed to follow while they're here. You know, a lot of people have come here and to make a life for them. That they've come, let's get, let's go to Australia and make a better life for themselves. And some people have even made money or made something of their life that they maybe couldn't have in another country. But that it doesn't always mean that they have what they're looking for. And you're going to hear a couple of stories, a few stories this evening of people's lives. They came to Australia to find something else. Maybe didn't quite get what they wanted. So we're going to launch into this song right now, this famous anthem. Still, uh, I still haven't found what I'm looking for.
I want to invite a friend of mine, Willa, and she's going to come up and tell us her story. Because her story is this. She came to Australia, didn't quite find what she's looking for. She's going to talk, uh, tell us a bit of her story and then sing a song for us. Let's put our hands together for Willa. Um, hello everyone. Um, that last song describes me as a young teenager. Um, I still hadn't found what I was looking for and my friends around me recognised, or one guy in particular said, oh that song sounds like you, you know. Um, now I have found what I'm looking for. Um, me and my family came to Perth when I was 10 years old. Um, I was born in London because my parents was, went, were sent to study from Malaysia there. And then we planned to come to Perth because my auntie was here and she um, said good things about Australia um, and we came through Singapore and ended up staying there four years but um, we came to check it out um, when I was about nine years old just maybe a year before we actually moved and I remember um, being by my auntie and uncle's pool it was lovely sunny weather um, cold winter weather just really refreshing and I remember smelling the pure air of Perth you know and as a 10 year old, what more could you want, you know, <laughs> um, except to jump in the pool, you know. <laughs> but we, we did that and it was freezing, so um, yeah, that was, I regretted doing that. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, um, we moved because it was too cold in London and my mother suffered from bronchitis and asthma. Um, we moved obviously for a better life in Australia, we knew it was a land of you know, great opportunity, wonderful weather, and um, when we came, people were friendly. You know, got to do lots of outdoor things, which I loved, you know, like crabbing and fishing and um, picking strawberries. Um, yeah, so even though we had all the material blessings, there was still something missing in my life. I was a, not a very confident sort of person socially, um, and that was sort of, didn't bother me too much because my goal in life being Asian, you know, the emphasis is on doing well academically, so I, I did actually do very well um, in primary school, but in high school I didn't do so well because there's a lot more people to compete with. And I started to get really depressed, you know, um, and I started to ask what the meaning of life was. I remember having a, a big conversation with a friend and we couldn't work it out, we could not work out what the meaning of life was. And then later on I heard that she tried to commit suicide, but then also that there'd been a big change in her life. and. Uh, just overnight and I couldn't believe it night no, she was happy you know I, I don't actually remember having much to do with her after that but anyway um, and then in my teenage years um, because I was unhappy I started getting into a lot of things that um, were probably against my family morals you know um, had lots of boyfriends um, and I actually started taking drugs because I, I met a guy who was into drugs and um, um, to my parents horror when they found out they wanted to actually shoot him <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, that was a bit tough because it, on him because, you know, it was my decision. Um, yeah, um, so, yeah, there was turbulence inside me even though outwardly maybe I would have appeared quite calm and um, I was looking for something and it wasn't until I heard the truth um, and received it later on down the track that that I had a peace in my heart and my life changed. Um, so this song is actually probably a, a little bit more expressing the turbulence that was in my life in those teenage to like 20s kind of thing. Okay.
And this is the issue, what is the, what is the answer to life if, if it's not relationships and if it's not Australia and it's not, what is the answer, what do we need in our lives? So we're going to hear some of this tonight and uh, let's put our hands together for the Africans. <laughs>
good. Test one, two. Uh, good evening, Perth. How is everyone tonight? Uh, so I come from a place called uh, New Zealand. Um, I actually ran here uh, seven years ago to escape uh, the lifestyle that I was in. Um, so I'm from Auckland. Um, my name is Jerome. I haven't, haven't mentioned that already. Um, been here in Australia since 2011. And back home, um, a typical Kiwi guy grew up, loved rugby. I uh, went to school, loved the partying. Um, and I pl played for rugby club, worked and partied really hard. And that was my life for a very uh, long time. And I just kind of got used to that week in, week out. And rugby, work, uh, partying. Um, and so I party and kept on partying. I didn't know when to stop. And I became um, addicted to so many things quite easily. So uh, from a very young age, I started smoking cigarettes. And then that progressed to marijuana. Um, and then I got introduced to this drug called ice, uh, methamphetamine. And I quite liked it at the time, but I knew it was quite destructive. And uh, the alcohol and the gambling, all of these things had gotten a hold of me. And so over the years, I thought, you know, I can manage it. I'll be fine. But then it came at a, po a point in my life where uh, I was quickly going downhill. And I thought to myself, you know what? I just, I just need a break. I need to run away from my situation. I know what, I've heard of the mines here in Perth. I'll just, I'll just come to Perth and I'll get into the mines and, and I'll earn you know, um, some money uh, and things will change, you know, my, my situation will get better. Um, I'll be away from my usual group of friends. So I'll make new friends and I won't fall back into that lifestyle or that hole that I was in. And so I, I came into Perth 2011. I lived in a backpackers. Uh, Wellington Street backpackers, it was cockroach infested. Uh, no job, no money. Uh, managed to get work in about six months. I was working in the mines. Life was great, I thought, at the time. Money was coming in, had a girlfriend, and had a new group of friends. And then all of a sudden, not long, I was back into the same situation I was in. I was back on the ice, and it just accelerated my, my drug intake. Uh, the alcohol, the partying, the chicks, the lying, the stealing, and there was this hole in my heart. And I was like, when is this going to stop? And I was crying out for answers, and there was something missing in my life. And I had money now, had a house, had a girlfriend. Life was, was good, but I, I still hadn't found what I was looking for. And then uh, I came to church, and I heard uh, this pastor talking about you know, Jesus Christ, how he died on the cross for my sin. And that's what the problem was, it was my sin. My sin had had me bound for so long, I was a slave to my sin. And it was my, my, my drug taking, my lying, my cheating, my alcoholism, sleeping around, womanizing and girls. This was, this was sin and it was really digging away at my soul. And then I heard about how, you know, uh, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to save, to die on the cross, so that my sin could be forgiven. And if I would repent and put my faith in Christ, then he'd take my sin away and give me a new life. I did that back in 2014. And, you know, God's given me a wife. He's given me a family. I've been clean off the drugs and the alcohol, the cigarettes for four years now. Uh, and it's a miracle because I was so bound and addicted. But I'm here to tell you tonight, you know, um, I found what I'm looking for and I love Christ so much. So, you know, you'll get the opportunity to, you know, um, uh, ask Christ into your heart. And I, I hope you make the right decision. Welcome to guys the car. Thank you. 
As Kupko said, we all have choices in life and we choose, we choose where we live. But you also will choose who you serve and what you live for. And so Danielle is here all the way from Nevada, Las Vegas, USA. She's got a message tonight. Let's welcome Danielle. to be free of the violence in my life, of um, seeing people get beat up around me. Um, I wanted to be free of, you know, the blood on broken furniture and people hurting. And then as a teenager, I wanted to be free of the reputation of being free and easy, you know, because people gossip and talk about you. And so, um, so that was me. And then as an adult, those kinds of things drove me to look for love and acceptance wherever I could find it and from whoever I could get it from, um, which just drove me to drugs and alcohol. Um, and so um, that was life. It was miserable, but it was my life and it was, it was bearable. Until my then 13-year-old daughter went and got herself into a relationship without even consulting me and the very life I was trying to protect her from was the life that she went and chose for herself. And that's when life became to become unraveled. Um, and I just, I said to myself, something has to change. 
I had to change if I wanted to save her. So I came to church. I came to this church. I walked through those doors and I felt this feeling of safe, like it was home and like it was a really good place to be. And, um, and so I decided to come here and um, I responded to an altar call where I could repent of my sin and ask Jesus Christ into my heart. And he cleansed me of all my shame and all my guilt. And he made me whole. And he, Jesus Christ has placed such a dignity upon my life. He's given me a wonderful husband who loves me and put a ring on it. And um, my children love him. They really, really love him and cherish him. And so when I came to this church, I got real with God and I have a relationship with him. I've come home.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like us to do something tonight. I'd like us to bow our heads and close our eyes. You know, just in a word of prayer, we're going to pray in just a minute. You know, prayer is the most natural thing on earth for human beings to do because there is a creator God in the universe.